Well, friends, uh, welcome to Valmel Show. My name is Manuel Amunati. Today, we're going to build another indicator based on a stable coin on Tether. You can see it's right there at the bottom of the chart. That's what we're going to build. It's a very interesting uh, indicator, uh, a lot to unpack there, and Tether in of itself is very interesting as well. We're gonna we're gonna look at it all. Um, uh, actually, let's start there. If you go to um, coin market cap, like we did in my last video, last video we did, we looked at, um, you know, uh, we explored a uh, group and built custom crypto indexes in a trading view. Um, and we looked at the top, the top market cap coins. Here, I'm going to click on volume. And lo and behold, what is the highest traded coin out there? We click on it, it is Tether. Right. That's why it's important to understand this coin, uh, understand Tether, and that's why uh, building an indicator on it might be a smart thing to do. It's another very important data point, and it applies to any crypto out there because Tether is always somewhere in the equation. This is the Tether based on the U.S. dollar. So Tether will be based on different uh, currencies. Uh, I think there's some for the euro, for, for the euro, for the yuan, but this one, we're going we're gonna to look at the one on uh, U.S. based on the, uh, pegged on the U.S. dollar because it is, as you can see, has the most of volume of all cryptos out there so phenomenal and you can tell it's it's a stable coin because it it kind of oscillates around one it's pegged to the dollar so it should usually be close to the dollar all the others are more like investment vehicles like you say okay i like it the price goes up the more people think it's useful the more people think it's a great investment or it's going to be a have a great utility you're going to see the price going up if people think it's bad you'll see the price going down here's another stable coin right this is from binance you can clearly see the oscillation there's a bunch of them here's another one us dollar coin and I think there's one more on this list. If I keep scrolling at the end, it's called True. Here, no, uh, where are you? Uh, Terra US dollars. It looks, it looks like one right there. Anyways, um, there's a bunch of them. You can, you can really see the difference in the chart when you look at it. Um, so, uh, before we start, please leave the video some thumbs up. Uh, it's very important for the uh, the Google, the YouTube algorithm. It's important for me. Uh, it also, you know, encourages me to make more videos. I don't sell anything. I don't show anything. So the thumbs up is what gets me going. What gets me making more videos. Uh, also, uh, it's important for the algorithm because they see a ratio between thumbs ups and views. So if I have a hundred views, ideally there'll be a hundred thumbs ups, and people and Google will say, oh wow, look, everybody really likes the material. So hit the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. So go ahead before we start. Hit it up. Thank you. So Tether uh, is, if you're looking for entertainment, go on YouTube and look at the history of Tether. You go, it's, it's like watching a movie unfold. Here is their site uh, at tether.to. And um, this is kind of one of the issues. Uh, the concept is phenomenal. So uh, crypto cryptocurrencies were very volatile. They, they said, okay, we should build something that's not volatile, but it's still a cryptocurrency, but it's not volatile. And they're gonna say, we're gonna peg it against currencies and it stabilizes your PL. So if you have Bitcoin and you, you wanna get out of Bitcoin, you could move everything to Tether to stabilize that PL. The problem is it's pegged to the dollar. So the idea is uh, there's no, uh, the, the way they print more Tether is they would get more dollars. So for every Tether, there should be $1. For every US dollar Tether, there should be a dollar. So if they have a billion Tethers out there, these guys, Tether.to, should have a uh, billion dollars in the bank account. And they've been around for years and have never been able to convince people that there actually was a one-to-one -one ratio. They just couldn't. They have vague letters. You can, you can look at it here, the transparency update. There's nothing convincing. It's always elusive, vague. And it is worrisome because it is the most traded crypto out there. And they say that if, uh, and they're constantly being sued. They're saying that if one day they do fail, they do close down, it could, you know, it could crash the entire crypto market or definitely affect it a lot. I mean, I think coins like Bitcoin are safe. They've survived through many ups and downs, that fork battles, the Mt. Gox, uh, they'll survive this as well. And as, as you can see, there's not, thankfully there's not just one, there's Tether and there, you know, Binance has one, there's a bunch of other ones. So, you know, it probably wouldn't be the end of the world, but it's very interesting. Regardless right now, Tether is the most traded one, which is very interesting. And that's why you'd want to build an indicator based on Tether. So why would you want to build an indicator based on Tether? Well, what, some of the ideas behind is when your crypto is going up, you are in that crypto. Let's say you're in Binance, Dodge, Ethereum, whatever. It's going to the moon. You're in it. And the the, the, the second you think, okay, that's it. We have a top. I want to stabilize. I want to safeguard my PL. You would move that from whatever you're trading into Tether. And then it would be stable. It would be you'd be stuck at, at at whatever value because it never really goes up and down. As you can see, it always fluctuates around one. If I look at a chart, you'll see 
right? It's always fluctuating around that $1 mark to what is pegged uh, or supposedly pegged. And that's why it's stable and uh, you park your money, you're more or less going to be uh, stabilizing whatever profits or losses you've made. You'd be stabilizing it by putting it into a tether. Now, as a side bit, I was watching some of these videos. It's very entertaining. Apparently, you can buy tether easily. It's when you want to redeem your US dollars for tether, it's very hard. You have to have at least $100,000. So it's like, you know, easy in, hard to get out, which is also another kind of a suspicious thing. It just really feels like a fiat where, uh, you know, when, when the dollars were, were pegged to, to, to gold back in the day, uh, right, they, it was very hard to see the transparency. Is there really the equivalent in dollars for every dollar out, uh, in gold for every dollar out there? And they just couldn't prove it. It feels a bit that way. But that's besides the point. We're not here to investigate that. We are here to build a cool indicator and, and understand what's going on and why you'd want to do it. Or maybe it's not for you. Either way, we're going to do our usual. Go to uh, Pine Editor. Go uh, open new blank indicator and you should see a page like this. I'm going to remove a few things and let's get started. Let's build this thing. Uh, actually, let me just remove this one there so we can, you know, see, see it how it develop as we go along. So we're going to have to bring in uh, the US dollar, the tether US dollar. So one way of doing it. So hit the hamburger button, hit the plus sign, which brings up your choices. And here type in USDT under crypto. And we're going to do this one, uh, USDT, USD uh, with uh, Kraken. I think there's a bunch you can do. That, that, this one is good. I already have it in there. But the key to remember is you want to be able to uh, right-click on it and see how it's spelled. Kraken colon USDT, USD. So this is very similar to what we did uh, in the previous videos on build custom indicators here where we did it for uh, uh, bit, we did dominance with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dodge, all these things, very similar. So here it's the function is called, so let me, let me call it, let me check my notes, USDT, USD. We'll give it a name, the variable name. And uh, here you call security. And you can hover over the security function to know what it wants. Of course it wants a symbol and that's what we just saw now. So it is Kraken colon USDT USD and then we need a uh, resolution and expression so resolution is a time frame so it's time frame dot period and it turns red when you have it and it basically inherits the time uh, of the top chart so if you're looking at five minutes in the top chart this will be uh, it'll, it'll pull um, USDT USD in five minutes and next one is the expression and the expression is close and you could do a different things. You could do open volume, etc. In this case, we want the close. That's all we're interested in. So now we can check that it works. We hit plot. And if I add it to the chart, there it is. And you can see right on the right scale, it's all one, but it's basically hovering around one. And that's the uh, US dollar tether, US dollar. It should ideally be close to one or it definitely will rotate around one. So we know we're pulling the data correctly. Let me go back to the code. And, um, it's going to be hard to see it this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, feed it into a, uh, a commodity channel index. The commodity channel index will basically take whatever scale it's on and scale it between, uh, you know, uh, around zero, but around, let's say, 100 and negative 100 or 200 and negative 200, depending on how volatile it is. But it's going to rotate whatever scale is around zero. And that's going to allow us to then bring in another value, uh, the, the close of whatever chart you're looking at, so we can overlay both CCIs and compare them, right? And that's what we're going to do here. So uh, here, let's um, do US dollar USDT val. And we are going to pass it into the CCI. It's simply CCI. And we pass it the value and the length we want. So I like to do a CCI length. I like to have that as a value that we can then pull as an input. So it's going to be CCI length. And the input function, same deal. It's a function that allows you to change that data directly in the chart. So you don't have to deal, you don't have to go into the code and, and save it every time. And we're going to start here. It is uh, the default value. So DEF val equals, uh, for the CCI, we're going to go with, uh, what did I do here in my notes? Five. Okay. And we're going to give it a title equals uh, CCI length. There. And we're going to plot this one. And I'm going to just see how, make sure it works. I'm going to add it to the chart. Add it to the chart. Perfect. I'm going to remove the old one. And here it is, right? So now we, it's now on a scale of, as you can see, negative 200 to 200. And we can tweak it, right? I, I said I want five. I want it to be 100. And now we're going to have a very different looking uh, USDT, USD, 
is now going through our uh, oscillator index, the, the com commodity channel index. Okay. So but what was nice, most nice about this is now we can do the same thing for uh, the close of val. And same thing, we're gonna pass the close, whatever you're looking at, in my case, I think I'm looking at Bitcoin, and you're gonna pass that through the same CCI, and we can overlay both and compare. What is a USDT, USDT uh, 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 value doing uh, compared to uh, the close of whatever you're looking at? So that's gonna be color, let's go this blue. And Bitcoin, let's go uh, black. Now I'm gonna add this one to the chart. Ooh, let me do one more thing. One thing that's gonna be very helpful here because it oscillates around zero is to plot the zero points. So we're gonna do color equals color dot gray. Fix that parentheses there. There we go. And add it to the chart. I'm gonna remove the other ones. It's hard to read. And now we can start comparing them, right? So remember the CCI is still around five, which is fine. And we start seeing something that is v fairly interesting. If it is true, right, that the concept of um, if you're happy with your profits, we should see uh, whatever crypto you're looking going up and the USDT going down. And look at this pump right here, right? We're on a 30 minute chart. Uh, this is uh, BTC, Bitcoin. And we can see here we're going up and look at USDT is going down, which I think is interesting, right? Now the contrary happens. USDT goes up and Bitcoin goes down. And it, and it does, does seem that way. Same thing here, right? BTC goes up. We see it in the black uh, uh, BTC. And Tether goes down. And it flips again. People are not liking this going down. So they go long um, Tether and they go short BTC, right? So I think that's very interesting um, to see. What's interesting here is that we start seeing, you know, they're kind of at the same level, which I think is very interesting here. Uh, there's not a one going up or down. In this case, we would say, okay, um, people now are getting back long into BTC. So you would expect uh, Tether to go down. We don't see that. They're kind of together, right? So I'm not going to say what the right way or the wrong way of looking at this. I think it's very situational. It's going to depend on uh, the way that the, the coins you're, you're trading, the euphoria, uh, the agreement. And, you know, Tether is also not just affected by Bitcoin. It's affected by a lot of other things. So 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 is, so is Bitcoin. So all these things you got to kind of, you know, uh, weave into your story, into your, um, your so you understand a nar narrative and hopefully help you uh, uh, decide on a trade or decide against a trade. Again, this is not financial advice. This is pure entertainment. At the end of the day, right, we, we're all personally responsible for our own money. But these are tools I think are very interesting and I'm playing a lot with this one. I'm trying to understand it better. One last thing I want to do here is smooth it out a little bit. So we're going to have, we're going to, we're going to add a, a hull which is basically a, a one of my favorite moving averages. So hull uh, and we're gonna allow it to be controlled from the chart directly. And we're gonna wrap these guys with the hull. So it is HMA, the hull moving average, comma, hull length. And the same thing for the close, HMA, comma, there. Let's add it onto the chart. And hopefully that, that's gonna make things a little easier. It's a little smoother, right? That's what we wanted. We wanted things to be a bit smoother here and they are smoother. This is very interesting. This looks like a very typical situation. It goes down, the price goes down and tether stays up, right? So you can consider you know, the up being uh, overbought or very strong or the bottom here being oversold or very weak, kind of the same concept as an RSI, as a relative strength index. We could put bars at uh, 100 and negative 100. What the heck, let's do that. Let's allow, let's help ourselves as much as we can with the visuals. So uh, 100 would be considered overbought. So I'm gonna go with a color red, if I can type. And negative 100 is the opposite. And there, let's add that one to the chart. And there it is. Let me remove the old one. And there it is, right? So we start trying to see kind of the limits, right? This is clearly in the overbought territory or extremely 
or overly strong territory is probably a, a better word. And here we have the extremely weak territory. And here, so this is the kind of the narrative that makes sense to me, right? One goes up, the other goes down. These are very interesting. It's when it doesn't behave that way. That's when I think the indicator starts becoming interesting. It's like a warning. Watch out. Something weird's going on. They're not in, moving in opposite directions. They're actually, this whole leg here, they're moving in similar directions, right? Here they start splitting, right? One goes down, one is staying up, then it goes down. One goes up before, uh, meaning that, you know, it's kind of bearish. And then the price follows, right? So that's what's interesting is kind of understanding, seeing these differences. And there's a lot of times it moves together. A lot of times it moves against each other. And because, you know, Tether is uh, uh, such a, a, a highly traded uh, product, it's something that you should watch. You should watch out. So I recommend, you know, this was Tether. I would recommend looking at the Binance one. Look at other ones as well. No, not, not just Tether or, or USD coin, just to, to play around with them to see how they, 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 they are different with each other and to see if this information helps you in whatever trading system you have. And this is something that would be interesting to add. You could very well um, add uh, Ethereum, put Ethereum here, put, uh, you know, Aave, whatever you're looking at, Doge, because um, this would be as well as helpful uh, for trading that because US dollar tether is kind of the flip of a lot of these pairs. It's also used as a place, a place to store your money when uh, you're getting bearish on whatever you're trading. So it could be uh, an interesting indicator. And also plenty of ways that you can, uh, you know, keep tweaking this, uh, adding it to other things, right? Especially once you feed it into a CCI, doesn't matter that Bitcoin is trading in the 50, 60 thousands and Tether is trading around one, right? We can very easily add them, normalize them to the same scale, which is something I've seen. If you've seen my videos, we do this all the time. So um, uh, I also did another video here. I think is interesting as well. Track Bitcoin versus the US dollar. We did it directly with the dollar. Uh, and here we're doing it using USDT. It's kind of a similar concept. I think uh, in the other video, we did it with the RSI. Here we're doing it with the CCI. But the concepts are very similar. We're tracking Bitcoin using USDT. And because USDT is supposedly pegged to the dollar, you're going to see the same type of information. So again, I hope you can. Uh, I hope you find this interesting. I hope you you want to dig in and study it. I'm not going to tell you you know what's right or wrong because I am still studying it. I'm still learning about it. But I think the fact that it's up there has a number one traded coin makes me think that you know it's obviously related to many different cryptocurrencies and it should be understood because it could be a, one of the missing pieces to your puzzle for whatever trading system or analysis that you're trying to do on the markets. Anyways, don't forget to give the video some thumbs up. Plenty more on the channel on Bitcoin, on data science. I, you know, I produce things on a regular basis. Uh, you know, keep studying, keep, keep digging in, keep mixing, slicing and dicing so you can stop, you know, trusting other people's words and trust your, you know, trust, make up your own mind, build your own indicators. People always ask me, hey, can you have the, do you have this shared um, trading view? Um, uh, no, I don't, you know, actually I shared once at one point because it was a more complicated script and they actually banned it. So I don't know what the system is. I think they thought I was trying to sell something. All I was doing was referring to YouTube, uh, because I was, I was pairing it and, um, they didn't like that. So, and, and the point of this video is not to, 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 to make uh, indicators It's to teach people how to make their own indicators. I think that's the only way to go. Uh, you got to understand your indicators. If you're out there buying indicators, I think, you know, you're starting on, you're starting on the wrong foot there. Make your your own indicators. Uh, we all have access to the exact same data. It's all free in trading view. So go ahead, build something cool and, you know, and, and, and learn how to understand or uh, at least understand with a high probability what is going on in the markets and potential directions of where it's going on. So don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.